this is the this is a very important time actually. Okay. And the reason why it's an important time, uh, it's not a time that myself or Pastor Dave or who it doesn't matter which pastor gives this message. It's not a time that we want to come up here and, and, and you know come come up with our own ideas of what message we're gonna give. Um, this is a time where we want to share the time schedule for the English ministry. So you guys aren't just members of the English ministry, you guys are leaders, you're workers, you're staff of the English ministry, or to be staff. Um, normally we sing a song and we allow people to that want to leave can leave, but if you're here, I believe it's God's plan too. Amen? But this is the English ministry's mission home meeting. Okay? And we're trying to find God's time schedule for the EM. So for the past few months, what, what was the theme of the time schedule was form. So today, it was a rough start, but we started form today. Uh, the purpose of that forum is to personalize, is to find um, God's message for you, the three things, to have that more personalized, and for that forum to, to happen naturally. Okay, so forum for us shouldn't be something that, okay, now we have to do forum. It should be so natural. It's like you're receiving so many grace and answers from the word that you have no choice but to share. Amen? Amen. And now that this has started, the direction eventually that we're, gonna, we're praying to go to is EBS. Okay, EBS is Evangelism Bible Study. Another way to say that is one-to-one -one nurturing of a new believer, a newcomer, Anyone who's new to the gospel ministry and gospel flow, it's to be that one-to-one -one worker. So the missional meeting, we're going to start going in that direction. The message will be gearing towards EBS. And why do we need this EBS ministry? Um, is because of the imprints, roots, and natures, ours as well, but especially those who are new believers and newcomers are not imprinted and rooted and natured in the gospel. So they need someone to help them. It's, you know, they come to church on Sunday or they come to EM, they hear their message, they receive grace, but for the imprints and roots and natures to change, they need someone to help them to do that. And that's why you guys are so important. That's why also forum is so important. Forum helps you to... Uh, Uncover those wrong imprints, right? And forum also helps you to uncover them and then put in the right ones. It's one thing to hear the message. It's another thing to say the message, like share your own grace that you receive. And it's another thing to write it down and organize it. When you do all three of those things, it just, it's more, the word of God becomes more active and more, you know, solidified in you. If you just listen to the message all day, it's just going to be listening to the message all day. It's like going to school too. If you're a good student, you don't just listen to lectures. You talk about what you learn to someone else. And that's how, you know, generally the over, you know, the, the higher education in, in, you know, in European countries or in America, that's how they do their teaching. And that's, they're changing that education system K through 12 as well, in developed nations at least, to have more discussion. Because when you talk about a certain subject, you become more specialized in it. Now, if you're going to write your thesis and get a PhD, you have to actually write a thesis on it. You actually have to write it to make it your own. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. So with the Word of God, that's the direction we're trying to go to, to help new believers, newcomers, to change their imprints, roots, and nature. And all of this is something to take place for us first naturally. Okay? Incorrect imprints, roots, and nature being, of course, the 12 problems. And Pastor Dave covered that today, but those are eternal. Me center, the physical center, success center. We have all of those things. And namely, it's about me. Okay, this is the ultimate target of Satan. Make it about you, not Jesus. Even as a believer, you go to church, make it about you, not Jesus. Make it about you or what other people have done to you or what other people have said about you. You get the point? It's, it's this imprint that we're trying to change. So how are we going to change that imprint, imprint rooted nature? Joe, can you see if it's still online? It's recording. Okay. With the word, prayer, and evangelism, okay? With the three T's. Okay, this is the key. So this week, you need to find that. So the word, as we've been sharing, has a flow. 
Now that doesn't, what, what that means is uncovering the flow doesn't mean you organize the message well. Right? We've talked about that before. You can organize the message one through 10. But if it's not personalized, finding the words flow is finding God's personal message for you. If you don't uncover that, it's just Pastor Yu's message. It's not yours. And the, the, the irony of it is, the reason why that's so... Um, I can't think of the English word right now. The reason why that's so like unfortunate is because God's message is for you personally. That's why God has brought you to this church and to this worship. Is that He has a personal message for you. To just have Pastor Yu's message is such an unfortunate thing. You have to discover, uncover God's personal message for you. And it starts with discovering the me that God has made. Take it from the New Year's all the way down. And in the midst of that New Year's message flow, there is a personal message. For me, for months ago, it's been you, reason. Why am I even trying to do the three todays to begin with? Is it for me again? Is it for my pain, my suffering, my desires, my this, my that? Or is it really for the right reason? It's really that flow of the message personally God has been telling me that. Do you know why do you have to pray? Why do you need to receive answers? I was losing hold of the reason. It was for me. You know, for the most part. It wasn't for God's ultimate desire for the field. It wasn't because I need to receive this word to fight Satan. That wasn't a reality to me. You know what I'm saying? It was just kind of like in the back of my mind. But as that flow keeps going down, you need to find that personal message for you. That is the key. Okay? That is the key. So with that in mind, you know, I'm not going to go over every message, but um, the core message and business message, there was, a, there was a, a key term. Anyone catch that? It's, it was in the title, right? Summit? Yes. Jude is on it. Summit. And to have a time for this was what... Okay, this is just my own personal idea of what the flow of It could be different for you too, but it was a time of concentration. Have a time of concentration to go up to the summit. Why? Because that has been prepared for you. That is the answer of God. It's not for you to work hard or to do something for God, but it's to have a time of the summit. To receive healing, to receive strength, to see the future and what God is going to do. That is how God wants to operate in your life. Amen? It's not like, okay, you have to do this and you better do it or because that's my plan and if you don't do it, I can't do it. That's not how God wants to operate. He wants to show you what He's going to do. He wants to empower you. He wants to give you strength so that you can see what He's trying to do in your life. It takes healing for that because our imprints, roots, and nature are not in that system. We're in a system where it has to be you. You have to do it. You have to go get it. Or if you don't, nothing's going to be handed to you for free. I mean, wasn't that like a golden lesson that we see in the movies? It's so opposite of the gospel. The gospel is actually the opposite of that. But the, the, the movies will teach you. You're not, no, no one's going to give you anything for nothing's free in this life. you got to go out and get it. Don't expect. That's how the world works, but that's not how the gospel works. That's not how God operates. He gives you first, and then you go take what he's given and give it to others. Take what he's, he's given and then go do it. It's not don't do anything forever. It's I can do all things in Christ. We forget the in Christ too often. We just try to do it like Nike said. <laughs> forget the gospel along the way forget the gospel along the way we try to do the three todays we try to do this and do that we try to give our worship without taking a step back and realizing what God has already given to us okay. find the flow uh, time of concentration and then today's first service, second service message there was a key word what was that? Restoration. Okay. Restoration of what? The covenant and the future. Okay? That was the key. The key was restoration. Get rid of the things that destroy and stand, keep you from, from God and the covenant. Get rid of those things. Hold, make a resolution to hold on to the covenant. Hannah, Samuel, the church. The future, the message we just heard. Things that no one can see, things that no one can receive, things that no one can do. The restoration of the church. Second book on world evangelization. These are things that no one else can do, but that God has given to you as a promise for your future.
So restore it this week. Okay. Now, that's the word. What is the three todays? What is prayer? It's now taking this word. You got organized the word. You got it. Okay, now you found your personal message. Now you have to apply it. You can't just leave it in your notebook. Okay, that's what today's prayer, why it's so important. It's the application. How are you going to apply it? Don't tell me. You don't have to tell me. It's not a homework assignment. You need to find it yourself. Jude, how are you going to apply it? Don't answer that question. It's just, an, it's just a reminder. To find it. Okay, so for me, the way that I'm trying to apply it, I'm just going to write it in Korean because it doesn't fit in English. In the morning and the night. I've been trying to restore this for so long. In the morning, when you're alone, do you have time of concentration? Do you have scheduled worship? If it's not happening, that's fine. But challenge again. Amen? And at night, I've been trying, I've started. You should see my journal. Looks nice. It's a nice cover. Actually, I stole it from my wife. But having the journal, I mean, she told me to have it, but you know, it was hers. But writing, I kid you not though, writing a few sentences does so much if you have a journal. At first when I was writing, I was like, it was so awkward. When I was writing, I was like, and then I was writing, I was kicking myself, like, what am I doing? Who am I writing for? Sam, just stop trying to write what sounds good. Just write, like, honestly. And as I started doing that, reflecting honestly, whoa. Now, I don't want you to read my journal, but it helps you to reflect on if you're standing before God or not. It really helps. So that's my way of application. It doesn't have to be yours. It doesn't have to be yours. But find a way to apply. Why? Because when you apply the Word of God, you begin to experience it. If there's no application, it's just here. But if you begin to apply it, find ways to apply it personally, you begin to taste it. And when you begin to taste it, you taste how good it is and how it's working, then it's so natural to want to share it. It's like good food. You have a good hamburger, man, you're going to want to tell somebody about it. I had Burger King yesterday. That's not that great. <laughs> but it's better than McDonald's. But you get the point. It's not Burger King. But if you taste something really good, it's really... Very easy to tell someone about that. Yeah. Okay, it's the same concept. You need to apply the word of God. You need to take it into your personal life. How are you going to do that? Organize that, okay? And then evangelism happens naturally. Evangelism is God's greatest desire. It's God's purpose and point and will take place naturally as these two things take place. And for, for us, we really need to start praying um, with specific prayer topics in regards to evangelism. Okay? Um, I just want to give you a few prayer topics to close. Uh, a few dates. Okay? It's, it's, really, it's really about this time schedule for Ian. Okay. First, next, uh, next week on the 29th, what's happening on the 29th? Ordination. Ordination. Okay. Jacob. Deacon Jacob is going to become an ordained deacon. Scary. Okay. It's really a very important time schedule. Amen? Amen. This is, this is what God has been doing yeah, from a long time ago. And now the time schedule is je a deacon, deacon, deacon. I combined the ordination and a ordained. Deacon, deacon, deacon Jacob is going to be an ordained deacon. Okay, next week. So pray for that. Okay, this week. Pray for him and continuously. Secondly, um, I'm not going to write down everything, but November 1st is another important time schedule. What is November 1st? It's the first joint Pyeongtaek worship. So it's like an opening worship pre-regional church for Pyeongtaek. I know we can't all make it, but those of us who can, this Wednesday... This is going to be Pentec. And it's also an answer. Pastor Brett has been here for 12 years. 11 years? 11 or 12 years. And now he's been, he says, I kind of been. He's not kind of been. Brett, Pastor Brett, please come in here. 
Patrick he's, Bur he's not kind of been commissioned. He had there. He has been. Okay, so this is a very important time schedule too. It's the first joint worship in Pyeongtaek, looking towards the future. God is absolutely going to do the word movement, evangelism, and gospel movement in Pyeongtaek. So even if you can't make it, if you can make it, we're going to go there um, to enjoy it together. It's what time? 7.30. 7 and lastly, I know he's going to post, uh, give us directions next week. And the last thing, there's many things in between this, but this is three important days. December 23rd. What is December 23rd? We haven't really announced this yet, but December 23rd is our Christmas camp. This is a very, very good opportunity. I've, from experience in evangelism field, what I noticed the most, the, the souls and workers that are found in the field, that are connected to the field and have continuation, always, most generally, come from someone they know. It's not a stranger on the street, it's not a go on the street and meet a stranger and then they come to the church and they become workers. Workers and disciples are generally found and raised through blessings of meetings with prior acquaintances. In other words, you. So you have a few months to pray for this day. This is this is not this is not just for EM. This is for you to experience evangelism in your field. You can pray for someone continuously and pray for this D day, this camp day, and invite them to this this even especially non-believers to this Christmas day camp, in which the gospel will, will be proclaimed and have an opportunity to hear the gospel, an opportunity to be connected to a ministry. It's a very important day. Okay? So for us as an EM and workers especially, this is very important. So the first week, second week, third week, Saturday, I'm, you know, we're gonna the pastoral staff will talk about this. We're gonna prepare an evangelism camp on these Saturdays. You know, up leading up to the Christmas day. We're gonna make flyers, go to the field. But more importantly than going out to the field is the field connected to you, around you. Amen? So I bless you in Jesus' name that uh, this entire week, okay? Look at the time schedule for the English ministry. Um, imprint roots in nature. Change it with the word prayer in advance of this week, holding on to the word. And pray for the ear. Okay, let's take a minute to pray, okay? Uh, let me give you a minute or two to pray, holding on to the word. That this week, we, we, we would all really have a time of summit. Um, the covenant would be restored in our lives. The reason, purpose why we live. Everything would be restored. Um, and that we can look and see uh, to the future. The, the absolute future, future that God is going to uh, work in us and use us. With these, especially these specific prayer topics for you. Okay, let's take a minute or two to pray together, okay? And I'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, I pray that from this moment on, and especially tonight as we're alone, that we would have that time of concentration with you, experiencing your word that is living and active, not only tonight, but for the rest of this week, coming back on Sunday with so many answers, Lord, that we have no choice but to share uh, how you are working in our, in our lives this week. We pray for the entire EM, this, the, the special dates that we have next week's ordination, the joint worship in Pentec, Lord, and the Christmas, upcoming Christmas camp. But Lord, even today, may you begin to work upon those days. Um, we thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen.